WLJZLP, Livingstone College Radio. What's good, world? It's your boy Yeti Lino, and we're back with another exclusive here at WLJZ 107.1. Today, I got my homie Chaz Dot Santana with me, man. What's going on? Not much, man. Glad to be here. And it's an honor for you to be here, man. You've been turning up a lot here in Salisbury. I personally, you know, been having the honor of being around you and everything else, but it's time for the world to get to know who Chaz Dot Santana is. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially since we got the station WLJZ 107.1 FM in your back. Y'all, mm-hmm. you feel me? You feel me? So let's get let's get right into it, man. So, so who is Chase Chase Dot Santana? Man, a humble dude from Salisbury, North Carolina, that is about to let the world know what we got right here. Okay, so hold on. You said from Salisbury? You, you from here? From here and been here since about seventh grade. So I I claim this is it. At my age range, where you growing up and learning the ins and outs of life, I was here doing that. Got you, got you, got you. So how long you been rapping? I've been rapping since I was like nine years old, to be honest with you. Okay. I ain't started taking it serious till like three, four years ago, but I've been rapping since I was like nine, ten years old because I can just do it. <laughs> got you, got you. Now, I, I've, I've been doing my research on you, and i seen congratulations on being on the Billboard chart, appreciate by the way. How far, how far up did you get up there? I think we peaked at... Uh, 41, I think. 41. 41. And that's big for an artist that's been taking it serious for less than, you know, five years, yeah. man. So congrats on that. Appreciate it. Now, I've, I've been listening to a, a mixtape that you've had out called Procrastination Kill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. They, I'm letting you know that that's fire right there. That song was on point. Now, what's your favorite song on that mixtape? Probably have to be uh, not the usual. Not the usual. Okay. I really, I got my bag on now. I ain't gonna lie. Respect, respect. Now, what what gave you the inspiration for procrastination kill? Because like, like I said, when I said like I only started about three four years ago. I felt like if I had been doing this a little earlier, I took it serious a little earlier. I'd have been took off. To be honest with you. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. Procrastinating around, playing around with it, and then finally took it serious. And I felt like if I didn't procrastinate then, I'd have been further along than what I am now. But got you. Sometimes you gotta take that path to get where you're trying to go. Hey, look, it's all good though, man. Timing is everything. You feel me? Timing is everything. So speaking of timing, what, where, where do you spend your time now? I know, like last night, I, I'm surprised that you even made it in here, man. <laughs> I was on your live last night. You was in the studio for for a long oh, time. Yeah. I was like, damn, man, bro, not gonna make the interview. This Oh nah nah, I, I can't let y'all down, man. But Respect. yeah, I'm, I'm, if I'm not at work working, I'm in the studio. If I ain't in the studio, I'm, I'm doing shows. Like I'm trying to make sure I stay moving, doing something at all the time. And, and move you moving is one thing that you definitely do, man. I met you for the first time at the uh, at the concert, the, the the baby concert. Yeah. That they had at Rowan County, that main event in uh and uh, before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you definitely turned up, man. And you was one to. of the best performers at the. At the concert if, if I say so myself You had more energy or, or as much energy As the baby that night man. Appreciate so that. That's, that, that started my My, my team Chance Dot Santana Mindset that I got right now Man so What what keeps you What keeps you amped You know what I mean To, to, to stay on top of your game And to be able to uh, To be as electrifying As you are During your performances It's really just the, I, I build I feed off that crowd Like the crowd, I'm already gonna go with that amp in general because I'm doing something I love to do. Right. But then when you're doing something you love to do and that crowd is feeding into you, it's like it, it's like a almost like a drug. Like it, it just boosts your adrenaline and makes you just go that. ten times harder. Okay. I, I can see that. I can see that. And I definitely noticed that during your performance, man. You have you had an interaction and uh an interaction with the crowd that allows you to, yeah. to to capture them before the song was even over with because as soon as you you drop the song i can't you know really say the lyrics right now you feel me, you feel me? <laughs> but but at the end of the day man you you definitely do your thing i appreciate that now, now let's talk about your upcoming projects man what you got coming up um we're in the middle of working on a um, mixtape right now called not so humble not so humble okay. trying to drop that by at least the beginning of may all right when we drop that, you know, look out for that. I'm coming with that heat this time. It was like I'm try- I got a lot of stuff on my chest that's built up, and it all come out through the music. I feel you. I can I can tell through your through your tracks that you are very passionate. That you take time when you write in write in your rhymes, man. Yeah. Who who influenced you growing up? Honestly, it was more so Lil Wayne 
and Cassidy at the time. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 28. 28? Okay, yeah. we the same age. All right, so I can now I, I get it. So I can understand why you growing up in that that that, that age and that generation, yeah, yeah. how they would be influential to you. What's a matter of fact, I'm gonna ask you since we since we the same age, what's your favorite Lil Wayne song? Probably Demolition Part One and Part Two. Demolition, okay. All right, I'm a. All right, I'm a BMJR type Ooh, individual. Yeah, man. yeah. All right, I got you. I got you now. All right, Cassidy, and that could be freestyle. I know Cassidy. He got some. He got some fire songs, but he also his freestyles be yeah, his freestyles doing crazy some damage too. Songs. Exactly, exactly. So, who, what's your favorite Cassidy song? Mm. Oh man, it's on top of my head too. Uh, you know the lyrics. You know a couple of the lyrics. <laughs> I was about to say something, but it, it's um, he said something like um, his, I can't say it, but all right, I got something like the the uh, frog on the apple jacks box or something like that. Guys, you guys, you. But it it was a cold line. I can't say the whole line like I want to say the whole line, but it's I, all I, I good. Where I'm coming from. Really. Yeah, yeah, man. FCC, we don't want to get in trouble over here. The LGC, <laughs> man. And we, you know, we love you to death over here, so we want to make sure you be able to come back. Now, as as far as Money Up, I'm gonna let you know that's one of my favorite tracks, bro. That oh yeah, you, got, you know what I mean? like, it's a lot of people's favorite track. I guess I guess the way the 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 whole track was put together and how the stuff I'm saying on it, a lot of people give me like a lot of like praise for that track. Big fast, big fast. I can't wait, man, because it's a it's it give me that it give me that prep for the summer type feel. You know what I mean? Like it make me want to go out and you know put on some clothes and make sure I get my money up, man. So <laughs> I appreciate you for my for my theme song for the summer in advance, bro. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Now I know that you have a big family back in with you man I, I oh, can yeah. tell that you got a, a team that you that you trust you know what I mean how how important is it to have your family behind you in your in your career like cause rank up entertainment is basically all fan and I, I like having it like that because I know they're they're only gonna do what's in my best interest at heart because they 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 grew up with me they they know me in and out all they want me to do is to see me succeed you know what I mean so it's like with family and business sometimes it don't mix but we happen to have the the chemistry for the, it to work like it's supposed to work which is a blessing honestly I feel you and I and I agree with you some with and in a, in a sense where you said that sometimes you know family and business don't mix but who who better to argue with than you know your your brothers or your sisters or your 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 family members that then know that you can secure that bag with the same people that you that you went to war with. Man. Right. So I definitely respect right. you for keeping it in house. You know what I mean with all your moves. Now coming up, growing up in, in Salisbury, North Carolina. You know I've only been here for a couple of years, but you know it's kind of rough out here, man. Oh yeah. It's, it's it's a reason why why the uh, the EP was named Two AM in Shotsbury. You know what I mean? It's crazy out here. That's another thing that, that that motivates me more so to do my music, to show people there's much more to Salisbury than what you see on the news or what you hear about here. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And I and I and I and me personally, you know, making making my way around Salisbury now, it's not as bad as everybody make it seem, man. It's it's not. It's all about what you make it, just like anywhere else. Yeah. So I appreciate you, you know, taking the time out to actually bring it like because when I heard when I heard the name 2 a.m. and Shotsbury, the first thought I, I was like, dang, all right, man, it's it's about to be some some extra stuff on this on this on this mid safe, you know what I mean? But it was completely the opposite. You feel me? It, you bought light. You bought light to a, a situation that made it to the point where we we could get an understanding of okay, yeah, it's rough here, but you are artist on the Billboard charts, man. You, you, you top forty. You yeah. in the top fifty. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, for you can get definitely life out of out of any type of environment. Exactly. So Can't I let your environment dictate what you do as a as a person as an individual, and I try not to let that like hinder me or what I do. And try to also let other people know, like, where you come from doesn't have to always define what you do in life, you know what I mean? Respect. Now, being an individual who has broken that barrier and found a way to be able to, you know, be an artist on the charts, charts that came from Salisbury, what advice would you have for that that future Chaz out Santana 
or Lil Chess that's, that's coming up that's looking at you like, man, if Chess can do it, I know I can do it. Just keep pushing, dude. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to tell you can't do it. A lot of people's not going to support what you're doing, mostly because they wish they were doing it or they wish they had did something when they were your age type thing. But just keep pushing. Don't let nothing discourage you from doing what you're trying to do. Period. Respect. Respect. You know, Chess, I got a, I got a, I get, a, I got a good, I can feel this good energy with you, man. I feel like you, you're a very smart individual, and I feel like you got more plans out that don't have nothing to do with music. What, what are your business endeavors outside of music? Honestly, what are your interests? Like, that's why I'm trying to grind now to get my bag up to, a, to like, to a point where I can actually give back. To, you know what I'm saying To Salisbury Respect Respect That's why with the The Nipsey Hustle thing It was like It wasn't even more so Just music for me It was more so I, I related to him More so outside of the music Cause I, I Honestly until last year I never really listened To his music Till last year But I knew who he was Years before that Right Because of what he did Outside of music So he was just much bigger Than music So I kinda look at people Like that Kinda think like how can I follow them footsteps? How can I actually do something more than music? You can't rap your whole life. And 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 to to add on to the whole Nipsey Hustle uh, situation at hand right now, and, and starting off by saying rest in peace to Nipsey Hustle. Rest in peace. And condolences to his family. How how do you as an artist after seeing? The, of seeing the the situation at hand, where you can be, have, you can do everything right, or have the intentions, have the best intentions in the world, and things still not go the way that is is meant to go. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all God's plan. But at, but how how do you balance everything out? How do you how do you maneuver, knowing that you have to worry about being an artist, but also have to protect yourself at every single show because I've been paying attention to your Instagram and, and your social media and your interviews. You be in some you be in some spots. Yeah, yeah. Where a lot of artists wouldn't really wanna travel alone. Cause when I when I met you, when I met you, it was just you and your brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm looking like, okay, all right, dude, it's like ten dudes over there, surrounding one dude, it's like six dudes over there. You know what I mean? But you you was you was you rode alone, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and for you to have to for you to have to know that there are individuals out there who come to shows just to do harm to the artists, how how do you how do you maintain your mindset and knowing that, you know, you gotta you gotta have caution but still get the job done at the same time? For me it's just more so like I can't let fear of, of what could happen hinder what I'm trying to do. I'm on a mission right now. Okay. So can't nothing nobody do slash say is going to hinder me from what I'm trying to do. So if I got to go to a spot where I know it's going to be a bunch of hood dudes that, okay, I, I'm still in there. Like that, that fear never crosses me. Like I, honestly, I, I fear no man or what they can do to me type thing. Cause my, my mindset is much bigger than that. So I, I pull up in these spots and stuff like that, just me and my brother or me and my pops or something like that, and, and not be worried about none of that. Because at the end of the day, what's going to happen going to happen regardless of who you with. So you going to let that hinder you from what you're trying to do? Nah, nah. I'm going I'm going to got, I'm going to make some some moves. So either you're going to be here with me to make these moves with me, you're going to respect what I'm trying to do, or it's going to be a problem. But either way, these moves are going to be made regardless. Respect, respect. Now... To piggyback on what you said, you stated, you mentioned your dad, you mentioned your pops. Yeah. Now, how is it? A lot, a lot of, a lot of black males don't have the the opportunity or the or the or the honor of being able to have their dads around. How do that influence you in a in a way? Because I mean, that's a that's in a sense an advantage. Yeah. You know what and I mean? I, but it I, could I, be. But I mean, I had my dad around too. I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. I had my dad around all my life. He's a He's a great father, but you know sometimes that sometimes that in a in a world like this, like people can can consider that a disadvantage as well too. You know what I mean? So what's your take on that? I mean, of course we would say that because you got the Lebar balls and you know, <laughs> right. like, you know how that goes left. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, like I like I said before with the family situation, he only want me to win. Respect. Period. And with him being there, he's gonna make sure he does whatever he can do to make sure I win. Sometimes we clash, we bump heads, it's gonna happen. 
because his, his his mindset or his vision for what he want for me is different from, from my vision and what I want for myself. Gotcha. So we got to meet in the middle somewhere, but in the, the day I, I know it's all I love, so I never try to take it to heart on what he's trying to say. I'm always open to criticism. If he feel I should go a little harder with something like that, I'm never one of the ones that's like, I know it all. I know I don't know it all. Yeah. I know he done been through some of the fire that I'm about to go through before time, so he can give me advice on certain stuff. And I take it and can run through it knowing stuff ahead of time as opposed to just trying to be hard-headed and think I know everything. So that's an advantage I have that a lot of people don't have, and I try to take advantage of that advantage. Respect, respect, man. And outside of, outside of your family members and outside of your hometown, mm -hmm. Do you have any outside connections that, or intents to have any outside connections? You know what I mean? If you had the opportunity to sign to a label, another label or to a uh, universal or things of that nature, do you feel like you would be able to, you would take that opportunity or would you stick with the rank up and try to push that as an independent? If anything, like, like, like we, and we've had people reach out, you know what I'm saying? But I heard, I heard. If, if it's not a situation where I can bring my team with me, I'm not doing it. Cause they done put like, there's people behind the scenes that of rank up entertainment that seven days a week lose sleep over trying to make sure they get me in position to make stuff happen. So how, how I look, jumping ship on them and all the hard work they done put in, trying to help me, they don't have to do that. Right. Trying to help me get to where I'm trying to go and I just jump ship because they waving this bag over here, but you gotta leave your team behind. Like, nah, like that's what that's what loyalty kick in at. Like, I'm I'm a loyal dude to to sometimes to a fault, but that's just that's just how I was raised. Gotcha. Now, are there any artists out right now that's in your area? As a matter of fact, I'm not even about to put you in a bubble because, like I said, I'm talking to a Billboard Billboard chart artist and uh, also, and I'm about to throw the bag out there, I know I might be a little bit early, but a Solace People's Choice Award nominee as well, man. <laughs> you gotta throw that out there, man. That's a that's a heck of an accomplishment right there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Are there any other artists out there that you would wanna collab up with or you thought about doing mixtapes with? You know? I mean, like it's, it's a lot of artists that's, that most people won't even know yet, but they on, they on the come up that I wanna work with. Like, um, I did I did a uh, freestyle with with Hype Shotter. Hype Shotter, okay. I feel like he 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 is one of the most talented dudes in Salisbury. Period. I thought this before I was even taking music serious. We would just we just be sitting around freestyling and stuff like that. I always thought he was like one of the most talented dudes. Period. He was way ahead of his time frame. Gotcha. So I would love to do like a, a full mixtape or just a project with him in general. Cause I, I had that much respect for his talent. Gotcha. Yeah. We, we, we speaking it into existence right now. Yeah, we oh get yeah. that hype shot in Chiz I saying Santa mixtape. Now, like I said, Procrastination Kills was one of my favorite mixtapes that, you know, no disrespect to 2 a.m. in Shotsbury, mm -hmm. but I really do like Procrastination Kills because I can hear the hunger and I can also hear the hunger too and 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in Shotsbury as well. But I can I can I can feel that grind. Do you do you think that, are you, are you planning on dropping another, making that a series? Like I need yeah, two, yeah. I need three, I need four. So that, that that's how that's how it's gonna go. We, I'm, I'm dropping the uh, not so humble mixtape. Okay. After that, I'm coming straight with the uh, the volume two for Crash Nation Kills because like everybody's been asking me, they thought I was about to drop a Crash Nation Kills volume two this time around. I wanted to do a whole nother mindset, whole nother like series to pop off that. So then next time I come around with the not so humble too like you know what I'm saying to start the series up gotcha, gotcha. trying to take a page out of Wayne book you know what I mean <laughs> I feel you now what's your favorite what's your favorite Chaz I Santana lyric that one lyric that if you if when you hear it you be, you be tearing up like man, man, I wrote that I was feeling that I know when I hear that I, I go back to that to that day when I wrote that or that moment or that incident that happened mm. yeah I can I can feel those lyrics Mm. So I let you give me three. I give me three. You got a, you got a, you got a, a heck of a uh, collection right now. So it'd probably be um, when I get a shout out to my grandma on the um, the money up joint. I was like wishing my grandma when she was here, cause she so she could see the man that I became, only chasing the money, like f the fame. 
that that's I felt that like that's that's a real line. Like a lot of people, they go at the stuff for for different reasons. Some people just want to be famous. Honestly, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if I'm famous or not. Long as I can provide for my family off doing something that I love to do, I could care less if the fame follows it. So that that line was like like deep for me, and it gave a shout out to my to my grandmother because she she she's not here to see me doing what I'm doing now. Hey, you know my favorite my favorite saying, man, is life is never over. So you know you're the legacy that she left. You yeah. know what I mean to keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean. So since you you the she was probably the backbone of the family. Now you know you taking those steps because you learn learn from the master. You know what I mean. Yeah. So for you to so for you to write that lyric and that lyric to stick with you, just know me personally. I'm letting you know that man. She she's smiling down and she's proud of you for the man that you are and the man oh, yeah. that you are becoming. Because at the end of the day, you still doing what you got to do as a man as an artist. You ranking up. You feel me? <laughs> Man, so as we as we get ready to wrap this interview up, man, I want you to like I I know I said before, you know, to what what advice would you give to that to that younger artist? You know what I mean. But if there was your last words, you know what I mean. What would you want to tell the world about Chairs Dot Santana before the tabloids get get to you? You know what I mean. Before you get to that number three Billboard chart song, and I'm and I'm saying, man, money up. That's gonna hit the charts, bro. Mm, appreciate that. That's definitely gonna hit the charts. But what's your last words? Without it being your last words, as like describing myself or just yes, sir. If you had whatever you want to say to the to the world, basically just just be on the lookout. I'm about to be on y'all TV screens real soon. Like trust and believe that y'all gonna get tired of seeing this face. <laughs> Oh, speaking speaking of the face, man, I've been I've been looking at I, I pay attention to everything, bro. I pay attention to everything. Yeah. Uh, I ain't I ain't the feds, I ain't on the extra <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? But I gotta pay attention, I gotta do my job, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So you get a lot of love from the ladies, man. <laughs> is there is there a Miss Rankins out? Is there a Miss Chez dot Santana out nah, there, nah, man? Nah, not yet, not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm working on something right now, but not not yet, not yet, man. <laughs> All right, you working on it. All right, my man, my man. All right, so where, where, I know where to find you at. Where can everybody else find you at on social media? On, you know, you know the Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Chez.Santana. That's C-H-E-Z-D-O-T-S-A-N-T-A-N-A. -A -A. That's on all social media platforms. Y'all go follow me ASAP. ASAP, ASAP, man. Well, once again... I appreciate you for taking the time out. You know, procrastination kills, and I've been procrastinating on getting you in here, man. <laughs> but look, life is never over, though, so we're going to be going to have it on a, we're going to leave it here on a good note. I appreciate you for coming here. Appreciate you. Make for sure y'all, make sure y'all get ready for money up, y'all. That's what I want. I want the world to get the money up. We out get here. the money up. Get the money up. That's the summertime anthem for me personally. I appreciate you again for coming here on behalf of Rank Up ENT, on behalf of Chaz Santana. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, yeah. WLJZ 107.1. Yeti Lino. Chairs. Santana. Life is never over over here at Livingstone College Radio. Let's get it. Tell me that she love me. Please don't do it. I've been out my mind lately, baby. I'm going through it. She just like this. Tell me what you need, daddy. I'll do it right now. You heard it here first. 107.1 WLJZLP.